Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody or good morning if you are in a morning time zone. So this is uh, um, another live seminar of the uh, Machine Learning for Science uh, series and uh, today we have uh, our speaker is uh, Professor Stefano Cutarolo from uh, Duke University. Just a few words as, as many of you may know, Stefano is uh, uh, the father of uh, the AFLOW consortium and of the AFLOW initiative, uh, including both uh, code for material design and uh, uh, materials database. So today is going to talk about data disorder and materials. Uh, so without any further ado, please, Stefano. <clears throat> dear uh, uh, Stefano, we both, uh, we, our name is both Stefano. And uh, dear Stefano, thanks, thank you very much for the invitation. Unfortunately, due to the particular circumstances, we can only meet uh, online remotely, but that's okay. So we're gonna have fun and we're gonna uh, try to learn something from, uh, from the next hour. Uh, 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 my name is Stefano Curtarolo. I work at Duke. I'm in the Department of Material Science and I lead the Center of Autonomous Materials Design at Duke University. Today, I wanna talk about uh, our, uh, our uh, work that we have been doing for the last three, four years is uh, data, disorder and materials. And we're gonna see how to refine the new materials based on, uh, on the needs, on the needs of, uh, of uh, commercial or scientific needs. I want to thank my collaborator, uh, Cormac uh, Toher, Corey Ozis, uh, uh, David Hicks, uh, Rico Friedrich and uh, Marco Esters that are uh, students and postdocs uh, at, uh, at Duke. Then I want to thank uh, Ken Vecchio and uh, Tyler Harrington, uh, the first professor and the second uh, 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 um, uh, students at the University of California, San Diego. Then Don Brenner, professor at uh, North Carolina State University, and JP Maria, professor of material science at uh, Penn State University. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, the work is sponsored by uh, ONR, uh, Office of Navarre Research by National Science Foundation, and here there is the logo of San Diego uh, 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 for, uh, for what we have been doing uh, in collaboration with Ken. Uh, I do not have the 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 um, i do not have the pointer okay yet i do not know how to make the pointer in powerpoint so we'll try to use the mouse and i will move the mouse rapidly so the mouse gets bigger so you see where i'm trying to point and i hope uh, everything is going to work okay stefano told me that the questions will be uh, uh, uh produced in uh, in uh, youtube so the, the audience will produce questions the right kind of questions and then stefano is gonna relate them to me okay before starting, uh, let me introduce uh, some advertisement. Uh, this is a book that we just finished writing by uh, uh, Sasha uh, Izayeva, Alex Tropsch, and myself. It's, a, it's just a collection of, uh, of, uh, of uh, tools and, uh, and the explanation about uh, this new field, materials informatics. And if you have a chance, uh, just uh, browse and uh, maybe you will enjoy. Okay. Now let's start from, uh, from the materials. Okay. We have a dreams. Okay. And this is the Elon Musk dream. As you know, Elon Musk, a few years ago, I don't really remember, in YouTube there is also the, 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 this famous interview. Elon Musk said that uh, I would like to die on Mars, okay? It's, uh, it's kind of difficult uh, to die on Mars because you need to go on Mars. And then, uh, and then everybody laughs during this interview. And then uh, near the end, he says, uh, possibly not on impact, okay? So which means that he wants to land safely on Mars, right? First of all, we need to go to Mars, and then to go to Mars, Elon is uh, is building this uh, gigantic uh, uh, starship. Uh, it's, this is stainless steel, where it's going to bring a lot of uh, materials uh, in orbit. From there, they're going to assemble a, a, a ship and going to Mars, and somehow land with Elon inside, possibly without impact. Okay. Unfortunately for Elon, stainless steel is not going to be enough. Maybe it's enough to bring materials in orbit, but it's not going to be enough. To bring materials in the surface of Mars. Okay, how do we do these things? Okay, we need to search for better materials because these materials currently do not exist to bring to bring a lot of uh, to land a lot of equipment in Mars. Okay, and I'm going to talk about ceramics today. And uh, we just wrote uh, with a Corey and Cormac and myself. We just uh, uh, wrote uh, this uh, review, and you can download it. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's going to talk about uh, this new field of high entropy ceramics and how they are found. Uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, computational and experimental methods. Anyway, to find, you, to find materials or to choose materials that can be used in, the, in, uh, in, um, 
you know, commercial applications, okay, people go into these plots, okay? So uh, uh, somebody asked, Matthias, with uh, some uh, particular mechanical properties, for instance, density or, uh, or uh, young modulus, which is elasticity, or this is young, this is modulus elasticity versus hardness, right? And then, uh, and then uh, in the past, uh, Mike Ashby, which is a famous uh, British uh, um, metallurgist, has uh, prepared these uh, beautiful Ashby plots where he went uh, through all the possible materials and he collected all these materials in these regions, you know, bubbles, uh, this kind of balls and this kind of uh, regions where like here there are the engineering alloys, here there are the polymer foams and so on. Those are Ashby plots and uh, materials engineers are always looking at these Ashby plots when they find the materials which needs to uh, satisfy satisfy the requirements the requirements uh, for the applications you see that these uh, areas you know these regions have a lot of space you know is any material here is any material here so the dream uh, of a computation metallurgist uh, okay sorry okay is to look for uh, is uh, can we make a materials here like is uh, less dense but has the same uh, young modulus of uh, of, uh, of these carbides or materials in between okay so can we make materials that do not exist and this is the, the 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 journey that we are trying to 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 seek for. Okay, so okay, so now the first things that we, we do, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a computational theoretical person, is to uh, uh, compare experiments uh, with uh, theoretical uh, results. This picture is not made by me. All right, this picture actually was made by by the Wolverton Group and is published in this uh, Sal et al. Uh, this Joma article. It's a comparison of uh, a, um, uh, um, stability of experimental phases with, re and, uh, with respect to the theoretical ones. Okay, so there is a big database called uh, the Inorganic Crystal Structure Database, and uh, in the and uh, this database collects uh, all the, the the entries that have been uh, that have been proposed during the years from the 1920 to to right now, pretty much. Okay, so uh, uh, um, this the, the the plot indicates uh, in, on the top right the binary, the ternary, quaternary distributions of this uh, of this uh, report in literature, and then the theoretical below reports how many times this uh, this uh, um, configurations has been found stable, mean that are stable with respect to. To, to the thermodynamic uh, descriptions of, uh, of, of stability, which means minimum Gibbs free energy, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You see that uh, uh, for, uh, for binary kind of work, you see that the area of the blue is pretty much the same. For the red, the red with ternary, it works worse. And then for the quaternary and the pentenary, it gets worse and worse, right? Actually, for the pentenary system, the uh, theoretical predictions almost never represents the what is found in uh, in uh, in uh, in the experimental results what does it mean right first of all we know that the theory we are using a density functional theory so there are some uh, uh, some problems and people have in Wolverton etc have been trying to fix these problems and in fact this plot uh, contains uh, chemical potential normalization integration of the specific heat etc etc so we make the calculations better but in the reality this indicates this plot that even if we make the calculation and we correct them there is still a, 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 a problem between what the theoreticians and what the experimental uh, can find. Okay. So why does not work? It does not work because, and oh, by the way, it does not work with an increasing number of species, right? You see that the more species you have, the less is going to work. Look at here. What is the difference really between experiments and, uh, and, and theoreticians? For experimentalists, uh, yeah, they make the material and therefore it exists. You know, it's, uh, it cannot be argued if the material is there, it, therefore it can be made. For theoreticians, uh, you know, uh, the material exists uh, if uh, it satisfies the minimum Gibbs free energy, okay? Which means that what is the minimum Gibbs free energy is a, is a potential that the measure that contains energy, entropy, configuration, blah, 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 and the test if this G is minimum, then the material should exist. But the question is that uh, this G, this minimum point should be found. Okay. Look what happens when uh, when uh, when uh, when we create these materials. Okay. This material, I tell you, when we create these materials, when uh, you go from a liquid state to the solid state, the material does not know if it needs to solidify in the FCC, BCC, or other configuration. And the materials, the liquid, tries all the possible uh, configurations quickly, following the Boltzmann uh, distributions 
true fluctuations, both in space and both in times, until it finds a configuration that is better than the others. Then this configuration grows and fills up all the space. This is the classical theory of nucleation. However, this fluctuation might not be allowed. Look, if you, these fluctuations are not restricted, meaning that everything is free to fluctuate and the liquid can try BCC, FCC, then the average of uh, the time average, which is exactly where we live, because we live in time, right? Okay, so the experiments are made. I mean, now there is liquid uh, and in five minutes there is a solid, right? So the, the time averages are exactly the statistical averages. And this is called the um, uh, vergodic assumptions. This is the classical theory of nucleation. On the contrary, if you do not allow uh, uh, um, uh, um, fluctuation or in the enthalpy, remember that uh, the, the Gibbs potential is the sum of the enthalpy plus the heat. So if you restrict the enthalpy or you restrict the, 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 the heat, then the fluctuations are restricted and not all the possible configurations are explored. So the G does not reach its own minimum, but reach something else. And a phase that is not thermodynamically stable can appear. But its life, its, uh, its working life can be very long. And even if it's not stable, it stays there and maybe stays forever. Think about the diamond, the carbon. The, the, the ground state of diamond, sorry, of carbon is graphite. But you know, if you have a diamond, it can stay actually for, uh, for millions of years undisturbed because the speed to go from diamond to, gra uh, to graphite can be, can be, can be at the room temperature and room pressure can be huge. Okay. So uh, how to restrict the enthalpy? You can restrict the enthalpy, for instance, if you make nanoparticles um, and, uh, and this has a, uh, this has a, a, a big uh, impact uh, in, uh, in nanocatalyst because you, you can, you can stabilize some, uh, uh, configuration instead of others or if you make uh, if you restrict the heat uh, flow right okay then uh, you restrict the delta q and in this case the time average is not going to be the statistical average so how the, the the theoreticians can find new materials namely to find descriptors okay not based on statistics but based on something that uh, can be made right let's uh, let's uh, let's check what it is okay and we call this uh, the synthesis, the search for synthesis descriptors, the problem of synthetizability. What does really fall? Okay. The first thing to do, actually, in this problem is learning by examples. Okay. Right. So sometimes, we, and, and, and then we look at shows the phase diagrams, and we're going to see that there are things that should work and does not work. And from this example, we understand what's going on. Let's take the archetype of uh, headaches. This is a boron samarium phase diagrams. Okay, I was studying this with uh, a friend of mine and uh, Ichiro Takeuchi from University of Maryland, and uh, we were studying this thing. As uh, is this APL here and this PRX here. Okay, we were studying this the, the, this problem, this uh, this compound, because sorry, this phase diagrams because the compound here you see samarium boron six is a potential conduct topolo topological insulators. I was not really interested in the, the, the electronic structure, but I was more interested in uh, nucleating this samarium example, right? This one. Okay. So, um, how this thing is made? How do we create uh, the samarium hexaboride phase? You know, uh, first of all, okay, first of all, look at here. There is samarium boron 66, uh, samarium boron 4, and samarium 2, boron 5. All these uh, phases can disturb uh, the nucleation of samarium boron 6. What does Ichiro do, my friend? He puts, uh, he goes on a, on a, on a chamber. He has uh, two, two targets, one of samarium, one of uh, boron. The targets are like coins. And he shoots a laser. He can, uh, he can uh, uh, measure the strength the, the, of the laser. You know, laser is shot like EWM, so you measure the time on versus the time off. And therefore, he can measure the amount of boron and, uh, and samarium that uh, are, uh, are evaporated, OK? And eventually, they fall on the on the substrate and create samarium, uh, some samarium boron compound. So through inside the, the, this chamber, we know what is the partial pressure of, uh, of the two species. Okay, what is found? It is found that no matter what is the concentration of samarium from this region to this region, he forms only samarium hexaborides here, okay? So this is crazy because uh, if I am in this concentration, I should form samarium boron six or samarium boron four or samarium two boron the other, right? But no matter what is the concentration, always form samarium boron six. 
How is this possible? Okay, remember that these phase diagrams is the equilibrium phase diagrams, which means that is the phase diagram that is made uh, after waiting forever. Okay, but what happens uh, in uh, in our system that uh, that uh, we have all these gases of samarium and uh, and uh, and the boron that are flying around uh, and depositing. There is a lot of heat. And there is a lot of entropy. Okay, look what happens. The first things that uh, a computational person uh, would do is to calculate uh, this uh, um, the, the convex hole. Okay, this construction is called convex hole. All these points, the red points and also the blue, these blue points, are quantum calculations and tell us. Uh, uh, the difference in energy between uh, the compound uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and the reference, you know, bottom is zero, samarium is zero, and so on, right? So the tie line, which is pretty much the envelope of these points, uh, is the Gibbs formation energy at zero temperature. Okay. So in these Gibbs formation energy pictures, you see that uh, the samarium bottom six, the samarium bottom four, and samarium two bottom five are the most stable configuration. No problem. There's no problem. Now let's make a, a virtual experiment. Two, actually, two virtual experiments. The Germans would say Gedanken experiment, right? So we start from a concentration of 33%. Okay, that's no problem. And we come from a, oh, a reservoir of low heat, which means that uh, both uh, uh, the boron and samarium have no heat, no that no, which means that they have a low temperature and low entropy. If we have low temperature and low entropy, then we would minimize the formation energy. Okay, which means that if you take a mixture, the mixture which is this uh, uh, black uh, dashed line, this would uh, uh, decompose in left and right. You see that this uh, this uh, this uh, the, the 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 cross is going down, and eventually, because remember you are in the grand canonical ensemble, so you can you have a free number of particles. You can you can change the concentration at wish. You will end up nucleating samarium boron four. Okay, so if you come from a reservoir of low heat, you are minimizing these pictures, and then you know it's just a, it's like a sink where you open the, the water, and the water is going to go to the to the bottom, to the most uh, to the lowest positions. So you will actually nucleate samarium boron four. In disagreement with uh, what uh, with what uh, what Ichiro said right before, right? Because you will not nucleate, it was nucleated samarium bottom six and not samarium bottom four. Okay. What happens, on the contrary, if you come from a reservoir of high heat, if you come from a reservoir of high heat, remember that the Gibbs free energy is enthalpy minus uh, TS. Okay. You are not going down in your minimization because of the minus, but you're actually going up. And these parabolas, okay, actually are the, are the x log x, the ideal heat. Okay, the ideal heat of, uh, of the mixtures, okay, by reducing the temperature. Okay, so these parabolas are the x log x, so are the ideal heat, and uh, going up, I'm reducing the temperature. You see that uh, what happens when a phase is uh, in a gas or liquid, and it wants to solidify, wants to replace something. The phase wants to get rid of as much as possible internal heat, okay? So if this is the heat of a phase, the first, uh, the first phase that is nucleated is the one which has the capability to absorb this heat as much as possible. And you see that actually what, uh, what is touched at the beginning is this is samarium boron 6. So it is not only the depth of the, of the convex hole that rules the, 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 the synthetizability, but it's also its a, a, a curvature, okay? Because if this samarium boron 6 were a little higher, then then this curve would touch the marion bond for four first. So you see, so when uh, this phase, when the gas, uh, which is uh, is uh, this line, uh, touches at this point, uh, bam, some marion bond on six is nucleated and remains. It can remain uh, for a short time. It can remain for a long time, okay? But it's nucleated and, and sometimes it's there to stay, okay? So the picture the, in, in summary is, uh, if you come from a low heat reservoir, you will minimize the enthalpy. If you come from a high heat reservoir, you will maximize your capability to flow heat from one from one mixture from one from one uh, mixture to another to another stable configuration. In this case, a barium boron six. And the curvatures actually the curvature of this uh, of this uh, which are the coefficients in front of this x log x 
are, uh, are, are descriptors, which we call them uh, 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 entropic temperatures, can be downloaded from our websites if people want them. We calculate them all the times. And it gives an indication of the rough indication of the curvature of the phase, of the phase diagrams, which is very important to understand uh, to understand uh, uh, um, uh, synthetizability. If you want to know more, you can check this uh, this uh, this review here or this PRX. Okay. Anyway, all right. So let's move on. So, by the way, this uh, this curvature also correlates with the with the with the uh, the, the the critical temperature of the. Uh, the critical temperature of the of the phase, right? So you see that the samarium bottom four, samarium two bottom five, etc., right? They decompose at these temperatures. So the higher is this, uh, the higher is the entropic temperature. The highest is the the, the highest is the the melting point or the decomposition temperature. Okay. Anyway, so in this case, uh, peritectic and so on. All right. So okay. So let's move on, right? Okay. Now let's understand something more. Let's understand. Uh, when heat now that we do realize that it's all about uh, heat therefore it's all about entropy now let's understand when entropy becomes uh, critical in our materials so let's let's take two two elements let's take a and let's take b all right and we calculate the a b phase diagrams as we did before right okay so you see that uh, you know once you have uh, this curve you can always do these averages and you take the bottom of this curve usually it's in the center but not necessarily all right and this number would be a number, right? Two dimension because uh, I have only A and B, right? Okay, all these uh, phase diagrams come from uh, from uh, from the A flow uh, repositories. We have like uh, hundreds of thousands of them, and uh, it takes a while, but uh, you can download them all and make the analysis yourself. Okay, so if we do this for every A and for every B, remember there are uh, like 90 A and therefore 91 B and uh, 90 times 91 uh, sorry 91 times 90 divided by 2 is roughly 5000 okay we can make uh, a a, a 5000 uh, uh, average of all this uh, of, of, of all this uh, the minimum energies okay this gives the expectations of uh, formation energy if i mix uh, a generic a with a generic b okay uh what about that's it no problem what about if i do for turners here it becomes more complicated conceptually more, more complicated also numerically more complicated because here you have a you have b and here you have c okay so you have a b which is a binary b c which is a, a binary and then uh, c a which is a binary but you also have uh, and uh, they are uh, found uh, like before but you also have something in the, in the middle remember that uh, uh, thermodynamics says that uh, uh, a, a point inside needs to be better than all the combination of the polymer downside plus other points inside. It's kind of recursive, which actually is truly recursive. So the possibility that this point becomes stable actually reduces because you have uh, uh, you have uh, more points to fight against. Anyway, if you have uh, uh, 90, 89, 87, right? And you divide it by six, which is three factorial, you find that pretty much you have like 30,000 phase diagrams of this type. And it takes a while, you calculate them all. Thanks to our uh, our our uh, our uh, thanks to this code uh, a flow hull that has been written was written by by Coriosis, okay, and uh, this is one uh, an example, and uh, you do all these phase diagrams uh, and you calculate uh, the the average uh, bottom, okay. So you see where I'm going, right? We had uh, the number for two species and now we have a number of three species, okay. Now the question is, what is the gain, right? What is the gain to go from two to three species, or better, what is the gain to go from three? To four species. To do this, okay, this gain, you see this amount minus this requires to rewrite the, 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 the way we understand the convex hole. Okay, this is actually a slice of the convex hole, right, for a ternary system, and I slice vertically, all right. And if I want to know this position, this, this point, okay, the delta would be this is the binary, this is another binary, okay, so the decomposition between this point and this point. Okay, would be the, the, the composition between the, the, the three binaries. And then this, this gain will be the, the extra gain that I get because I am adding one species. So this delta H corresponds to how much energy okay, is added, which means that it's reduced because it's negative, by going for an N, really N compounds, 
instead of the co of a combination of n minus one compounds giving the same uh, uh, compositions. This is this delta H. And in this article, okay, in this article, uh, it's a very short article, like two pages. You can see that uh, this delta H is uh, is uh, is like the the the, the it's like the, the difference between two convex holes, and therefore one convex hole can be can be recursively uh, defined as the sum of all this delta H with n goes to z one to n uh, to to n, right? Okay. So that's it. So that is uh, this game. Why we like this game? Because when you go from a, an order system to a disorder system, you are fighting this H with respect to do the entropy gain. Look at here. This is a cartoon. This is not a real number. I show the real numbers in a few minutes. This is this uh, uh, gain in enthalpy to go from uh, n species to n plus one species, and you see that's actually reducing. So which means that the gain, if if I'm making a four species compound the gain to go from three to four is not as big as if I were doing a three species compound where the gain to go from two to three is big, okay? And this needs to fight against entropy, okay? That even in the ideal uh, uh, um, model for entropy, which is x log x, okay? And you know that the probability x would be one over n, but you have n species, okay? So the, the, the ideal entropy would be Ts, even at room temperature or high temperature, and if the system is completely disordered, okay, then eventually this uh, the enthalpy gain will go below the entropy gain, okay, to increase the number of uh, increase the number of species. So entropy will eventually take over. This red line, if all the species are are order disordered, and if you say that oh, but no, maybe one sublattice is still ordered, then you have the second one, two sublattices are still ordered, and a third one, and so on. Anyway, you have all these envelopes of of possible sub uh, system that are disordered and you know you realize that eventually entropy takes over and uh, and uh, with the number of species and uh, and uh, takes over the, the the entropy gain and the system becomes disordered so you can define here three regions a regions of low entropy okay and where everything is uh, uh, everything is uh, is uh, determined by entropy Enthalpy minimizations. Then you have a region of excess of entropy, okay? So where everything is determined only by entropy. So those are the, the world of entropy stabilized materials. I show you in the future that uh, in some example, for instance, entropy stabilized oxide. And in the middle, there are high entropy systems where there is a combination of uh, entropy and enthalpy. So this is the region. Why, at the beginning, you remember the pictures, the histogram? Let me go back. Okay, remember this picture. This is the reason why, at the beginning, these things works very well for binary and ternary, but it gets worse and worse with the number of species. Because here, they were minimizing the Gibbs, uh, the, sorry, they were minimizing the formation entropy, and uh, this is a good descriptor for system with a uh, small number of species, but it's actually the wrong descriptor for system with a high number of species because it's all about entropy. Let me go back to give me one second. Okay, now the real numbers. The real numbers we have done the numbers we have in, the, in this article we have done the numbers, and this is the 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 the, the, the um, enthalpy and entropy gains, right? The, the bars are the uh, enthalpy, and you see that. Uh, uh, if you if you take those are for metals because we we, we had uh, many more metals than uh, than ceramics in our websites and you see that if you take two compounds 94 percent of them uh, form form uh, compounds sorry two if you take two systems two species 94 percent of them forms two compounds okay and the average uh, the average uh, enthalpy is uh, 185 electron volt okay but if you go to three species only 15 percent of them form uh, compounds, okay? And uh, and for four species is negligible. And all these guys need to fight against an engulfing amount of entropy. This is uh, the, the this is if everything were disordered, if uh, everything minus one species were disordered, everything minus two species, everything minus three. So practically when you have uh, around four species, pretty much for mixing species, pretty much everything is disordered. That's why when people mix, four, five, six pieces, most likely the system is disordered 
and uh, and uh, and uh, a stable configuration cannot be found. But even if it were found, it would not really be stable with respect to with respect to temperature because it would uh, it would uh, it would uh, um, be the dissoci dissociate very uh, easily. Okay. This is the the ground rest truth. This is the the distribution of uh, of the of the enthalpy gains with respect to species. Okay, so you see that for binaries is very broad. For ternaries uh, gets gets smaller with respect to towards zero. Okay, so and for for quaternaries even and even even smaller. This indicates that despite uh, by increasing number of species, the number of configuration increase. The gain of each configuration decreases faster than the increases number of configurations. So overall, the effect is the number of stable compounds actually decreases with the number of, uh, of species. Okay, and uh, how many we we, we tested uh, for uh, two thousand? We tested the ten for two dimensions. We tested one thousand. For three dimensions, we tested like thirty thousand, and only two thousand five hundred are uh, are uh, are stable. And uh, for uh, uh, four species, we tested one hundred and thirteen thousand compounds. Sorry, configurate. Sorry. 113,000 phase diagrams, and only actually 50 generate a four species uh, a stable configurations. And, uh, and actually, we are stunning them. And they're all quite, uh, and they're all very low energy. So the, 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 the maximum is like a 50 mil electron volt per atom. And you know that KT room temperature is, is a 25 mil electron volt, which means that if you go four, five, six hundred Celsius, all these things is already, is already disordered. So there is nothing you can do. The world of four, day, four uh, species metals is all disordered. Applications, all right? Okay, we apply this to these ideas to oxides, and I will uh, I will introduce uh, I will introduce a uh, 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 few slides uh, in the in the next few slides. Okay, we throw, we 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 apply this uh, we we call this spectral analysis also to glasses. Okay, I'm not going to talk about glasses, metallic glasses, and also carbides. Which I will talk uh, near the end of near the end of, uh, of of the of the seminar after the oxide. Okay. Now let's let's go to the oxide first. All right. Okay. This was done with uh, with JP Maria and um, and Don Brenner and 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 uh, it's reported in this uh, entropy stabilized oxide uh, article. Okay. Remember that we want to minimize Gibbs free energy, but I told you that entropy is leading. So what we do? We just completely neglect enthalpy. So practically, we say that since entropy is not important, we just don't even calculate it. And the since entropy is so important that we don't even calculate it either. We just take x log x. So this is a this is a type of a computational uh, uh, work uh, where there is actually no computation, right? With just uh, some approximations, and uh, and uh, we truly find the materials in this way. Okay. If you do this analysis and instead of minimizing uh, uh, the Gibbs free energy, you max you maximize the S. You understand that eventually there will be because of, of the of the threshold before you see that uh, uh, H going down and TS going up. There will be a, a cutoff below which, all right, the nothing is going to form, and above which something is going to form. So what do we take? We take a bunch of oxides. At the beginning, we took like this five, and then uh, and then later in, in in the research we added the calcium oxide, iron oxide, and scandium oxide. Anyway, we take a bunch of these metal oxides. Okay, they have no extensive solubility without uh, themselves. They each one has a uh, has their own natural uh, low temperature uh, or, uh, uh, crystal structures. Okay, there is no. We just take these things because they are reasonably cheap and reasonably easy to make in powder and mix. Them, okay, and then we say that uh, we take two of them, whichever it, whichever they are, and then we mix, and then we bring a high temperature. We see what happens. Nothing. Then we take three, whichever these three might be, and nothing happens. Four, and nothing happens. And then we take five. So if, if you take any five of those uh, eight, okay, but a miracle happens, okay? So you have a phase transition which uh, depends on the number of species. Look at here, okay? So if you take any four combination of these guys, nothing happens, the system remains immiscible. And if you take five, they become missing. What do I mean with miscibility? Okay, you take this, uh, uh, you take uh, uh, this mixture. Okay, at low temperature, every one uh, you make a powder. Okay, 
and then uh, and then you make uh, uh, x-rays and you calculate the two theta here this is the two theta right okay as a function of temperature and you see that all these uh, arrows represent the, uh, the, the 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 two thetas of uh, the original systems okay so mgo is going to have something uh, cobalt oxide is going to have something else and so on right so you see that uh, by increasing this temperature okay i can see when uh, uh, if the material, if this mixture is going to have uh, a, a, a transformation. See, 750, 800, 850, you see that 850 already start, uh, I, I, I'm losing these peaks. And then uh, what, between 100, 900 and 1000, I can only have these two, two big peaks that represents the rock salt configurations. So there is a phase transition around 900, 950, it's not important where, where all this, uh, this powder of this becomes one single solid solution of metal oxide, which means that they become rock salt where one sublattice is oxygen and the other sublattice is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a mixture between uh, magnesium, cobalt, nickel, uh, copper, and zinc. Okay. It is really, is it, is it uh, uh, entropy driven? Well, it depends. Remember that when you melt uh, uh, ice, you know, you go from ice to water, and then you can go back. You just reduce the temperature, you go back to ice. So an entropy-driven transition needs to be reversible. Look at here, all right? So if you go to 1,000 Celsius, okay, this thing is a, is, a, is a mixture. But if you go back to 750, they separate again, okay? They become, again, the original uh, 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 powders. Okay, so the original uh, uh, binary oxides, and if you increase the temperature again, okay, they transform in, uh, in back into the into the into the um, uh, the high entropy phase solid solution. This is very important because you you actually we didn't think uh, at that time, but actually you can uh, you can uh, cycle this uh, this loop uh, going back and forth and use uh, in a in a in a heat engine to 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 have uh, to have uh, some. Uh, um, chemical application and we'll show you later okay anyway this is an example it's a, we know okay so before here we understand it's reversible now we understand uh, if it's uh, endothermic okay so pretty much we increase the temperature and we need to put uh, to put the heat inside uh, so the system has a phase transitions okay so this is a differential scanning calorimetry those are low temperature you see the the lines of the uh, the, the, the 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 density of lines of the of the um, original uh, binary oxides and bump when you go above this temperature you can you have only the you have only the uh, rock salt ones okay this is the mass change pretty much there is no mass change and this is the differential scanning calorimetry that tells you that uh, that, uh, that you need to inject uh, heat into the system so that uh, you have these transitions okay goes from order to disorder okay remember what happens look here you see that the look at the concentration mg co ni ku zn all the concentration of this guy, five guys is uh, equi right they are equi concentration and you know that uh, the x log x okay is the maximum when uh, all the, uh, the 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 concentration are identical okay in a mixture the more even the equi concentration is the one with the highest uh, amount of uh, ideal entropy so what happens if I change the compositions? Remember that we are fighting. Let's go back to this. Okay. We are so if this changes, this is gonna change. If we were looking for mean with the minus or max, and we are able to change S, okay, then we need also to change T. So if we are reducing the temperature, okay. Sorry, sorry, excuse me. If we are reducing the entropy by going uh, away from equi-compositions, then we will increase the, the transition temperature. And this is the test that uh, JP and I did. We, we went off stoichiometry, right, look at here, this is the composition of, uh, of MGO, right? We take, uh, we take, uh, uh, we change the composition of one of the five and we put the other four equi-compositions. So which means that here we go 0 0.1 MGO and the, and the others are 0 0.9 divided by four. Okay, so you see that uh, at every composition, where is I have the maximum entropy, the transition temperature is smaller, right? This is valid for MGO, cobalt oxides, nickel oxide, 
copper oxide and, and zinc oxide. So you see that, that there are these V-shapes. So these V-shapes, okay, are pretty much uh, um, uh, uh, a, a eutectoid, okay, in the five-dimensional shape uh, space of the phase diagrams. And these pictures, okay, these five is, are really five slides, five two-dimensional slides, okay, in a five-dimensional eutectoid. Below the Vs, I have a decomposition in original phases, and above the Vs, I have a rock salt solid solutions. Okay? That's perfect. So pretty much what we have, we have in a five-dimensional tectoid below which we have uh, the comp we have the composition in the various uh, binary oxide, above which we have uh, the, uh, the five-dimensional solid solutions. Okay? Now applications. There are a lot of applications uh, for uh, for uh, here. You see some uh, some of our uh, of our uh, of our uh, collaborators, right? Uh, that they did some study on uh, on uh, on electric uh, properties, okay, the electric properties or uh, or for uh, for uh, transport, right? Okay, for conductivity. Sorry, transport of uh, of uh, lithium or sodium, okay, kinetics, okay, diffusion. Um, and, and another electrical, another uh, distortion properties. It's, uh, there is a young parallel distortion in, in, in the copper in the copper position. Anyway, so there are some ap applications, and you can look more uh, informations in the, our review. Uh, but what is important actually is this uh, is this a paper by Zai in coming from the Majumdar group in uh, in Stanford, and uh, actually they had a very good idea. Do you remember before I told you? That you can loop the stents, right? You inject the heat and you reduce it. You inject heat and then you cool down. Heat up, cool down. You see all these things. What happens if the properties of this phase are different than the properties of the other phase? Actually, this is the good idea they had. Okay. So if you take the low temperature phase, okay, and it's a mixture of uh, of the five uh, of the five uh, uh, of the five uh, oxides. And uh, you uh, put water inside. You're going to have a uh, uh, water is going to split. Okay, uh, so they're gonna they're gonna they are catalytically active. So water is going to split. You're gonna have a release of hydrogen. Okay, a low temperature, and okay, release of hydrogen at low temperature, and oxygen is going to go inside. Okay, it's water splitting, but really, I mean, it's uh, it's one way, right? You know, when uh, when all the one all the the the, the material is full of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of oxygen, nothing happens anymore, and that's it, okay? But at that time, you heat up the powder, okay? And the powder has uh, the high entropy single phase at, high, uh, at a high, pressure, high temperature, 1,000 Celsius, and so on. And the oxygen actually is incompatible with this phase, and it gets really released, okay? So then, when oxygen is released, you cool down these tanks, okay? And then at this uh, the high entropy phase, uh, the single phase, decompose again in the original in the original uh, uh, low temperature uh, uh, binary oxides. Okay, where you can repeat the, the the cycle. So you have release of hydrogen low temperature and release of oxygen high temperature. So practically by doing this uh, this uh, thermal thermal uh, engine, you heat up and you cool down. You heat up and cool and cool down. The the difference in uh, in uh, in the heat. Uh, that you inject at the beginning and you extract at the end is the the amount of chemical energy that you have injected into water to split it. Okay, so it's very cool, right? So practically, you can do this uh, this loop, uh, heat and cool and heat and cool. If you have a a, a, a very suppose you have a very uh, inexpensive source of heat, such as a nuclear power plant, you would be able to do this and generate uh, uh, free uh, hydrogen. All right. Okay. Unfortunately, the 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 transition temperature is still too high. Okay, and uh, so it's not compatible with the current technology of pipes and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, heat exchanger. So this this material does not work yet. But uh, maybe we hope that uh, there might be another type of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, high entropy oxides uh, slash uh, entropy stabilized oxides that uh, can have uh, a much lower transition temperature, and so you can. Uh, we might be able to do this loop at uh, at temperatures that are compatible with the current technology of uh, of nuclear power plants, so to generate uh, hydrogen and uh, and oxygen. Okay, 
this is pretty much a, 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 a very good application and you can read uh, what's going on in this review okay now let me do the second part of the applications the carbides okay we were interested in these carbides because uh, because they are hard uh, the, because they are high temperature and because we want to make uh, Elon Musk uh, happy right we want to make him land uh, in uh, in Mars possibly not on impact okay so listen guys so here I need to have a better estimation of entropy before the entropy was simply x log x and we found that for the carbides was not was not enough here we need to have a better estimate a, a, a way to estimate that and we know that the entropy is really difficult quantity to calculate because the entropy is the degeneration of a state meaning that you go at the ground state you increase a little bit uh, the, uh, the the energy of uh, delta epsilon and you count as many configurations there are in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, that have that particular energy which is e and e plus delta e plus delta epsilon okay this number of configuration is this big omega the omega of boltzmann you do the log you stick in front of the coefficients kb and this is the the entropy practically the entropy is the log of the, the generations okay to calculate that we need to know all the configurations okay so what do we need to know we would have to sit on these blue lines okay and calculate an infinite number of configuration which is imp impossible another way to calculate the entropy would just to 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 make a, a molecular dynamics and let the the, the system uh, uh, run for long 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 time see the fluctuations in energy okay right thermalize everything see the fluctuation in energy and use the green cubo relationship uh, with, between the autocorrelation, probably here forces and uh, and velocity to calculate uh, the, the 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 entropy. Okay, this is another way to do it, and this would take forever. Practically, if you want to do to discover materials quickly, you cannot use this method because uh, it will take forever, forever, forever to get uh, to get to the entropy of every system. But uh, we can do some uh, shortcuts, and this is what uh, this is what uh, we we have been doing. Right. Remember that I said that entropy, the definition, is the degeneration of the state. Well, we don't have the degeneration of the state, but we have a lot of calculations. Meaning that at a certain configuration, when we are looking for this blue blue cross, we have a lot of other configuration that we have already calculated before, seeking for these blue dots, where these blue dots is the minimum of all these things. So once we have all these calculations, as long as the configurations are evenly calculated in the in the various uh, for the various compound which means that the number of these uh, red uh, stars is exactly the number of red stars i can compare the density okay and uh, so what do i do i calculate uh, the, the 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 histogram how many there are okay between uh, a certain uh, beam of a few million electron volt this histogram actually is truly the thermodynamic density of state in the same way you have an electronic density of state, vibrational density of state, this is the thermodynamic density of states. Okay, I have a, I have a, here, I, I, uh, the, the, they tend to accumulate, so I have I have a very high, high uh, um, uh, histogram. Here, they are, it's very broad, okay, so they are very spread. So the assumption is very simple, that we take uh, the entropy, the, some sort of a curvature, of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, histograms. At the beginning, we were taking the width, uh, the the at half maximum. It's not really important, but practically what we do right now, we just uh, we just uh, try to 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 uh, to approximate this uh, statistically, and we take the variance. Okay, so the smaller is the variance, the higher is going to be the like the variance. It's like a Gaussian. The smaller is the variance, the higher is going to be this uh, entropy. Okay. Remember that this is not the real entropy, okay? Because this entropy, it looks like an entropy. It should work like an entropy, but it is not really an entropy because for an entropy, I would have, I would need to have an infinite number of these red signs. So we do not call entropy. We call entropy forming ability, okay? In the approximation of very small systems where we have a very few calculation, actually they should be the same, but. Since we have a finite number of computers and finite number of uh, electricity, then this cannot be considered entropy. But it should work as much as possible like an entropy. Okay, and uh, so what do we do? 
the our definition of the entropy forming ability is the sigma is the variance of the spectrum of uh, the, the the enthalpy with respect to the number of species calculated with zero temperature one over which means that uh, the, the smaller smaller is the variance the higher is the entropy so these things should work as an entropy and therefore when we maximize these things we know that uh, we have more chances to form solid solutions remember that here there are some tricks because when you calculate these uh, occupations you also need to consider that there are a lot of phases that look the same okay so no, they are the same even if they don't look the same so you need to to measure to calculate the symmetry the the, 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 the factor group which is the number of configurations that uh, that gives the same a uh, unit cell and therefore uh, in, in 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 getting the real weights you need to be careful and you need to use uh, to use uh, to to use these g's which are the cardinality of the factor group uh, for with respect to the to the to the to the um, uh, structures that you calculate uh, with your quantum code and you can get this g from uh, from uh, this x et al from uh, our uh, a, a symmetry code that calculates uh, all this all these quantities okay so the, this code calculates all these g's the c hal by by, by cory osis uh, calculates the h and given g and the h you get the sigma okay it's got it's a uh, it's uh, soon to be automatic right now we still need to do things by hand but all the pieces are inside our code and very soon we you're going to press a button and you get uh, this quantity from our website anyway all right now let's uh, let's uh, try this uh, on uh, on uh, on metacarbides so we take uh, all this uh, afnium molybdenum niobium tantalum titanium uh, vanadium tungsten and zirconium all right those are refractory metals okay and we try to see if they form a five metal carbides so this is it means that you pick any five of those plus carbon and you see if it works so you do all the combination okay so of, uh, of all the ones that there are like um, 56 okay uh, you calculate the entropy forming ability by shaking this combination with uh, with uh, with this uh, with this code okay well with a POC okay with a POC combinations partial occupation code we calculate all the possible shuffling of the metal carbides okay we calculate all these energies we get the g's we get the h and then we get the spectrum okay and from the spectrum we get the the, the efa okay so this efa measures the potential entropy of the system okay then since all this uh, 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 this uh, this uh, this uh, um, configurations are unstable we also measure the the distance from the from the convex hole the convex hole that is this remember it is delta h that we measure with uh, the other code uh, of us uh, like uh, a flow convex hole. so don't worry about uh, f vib that is not important and epsilon right okay so look now we put uh, all these uh, uh, carbides uh, we order them uh, with respect to efa okay so we have this this data computation this takes like a few months to get all this data there are a lot of calculations okay they're like a uh, uh, many many thousands of calculations and then we take uh, uh uh sorry well we take a few so my apologies we take a few of these systems we take the good ones which means ifa efa we take the bad ones which mean low efa and something in the middle right okay and then we give to the experiments to the exper our experimental collaborator to make it okay you see that uh, uh, and then this is the experimental uh, uh, outcome so you see the s means that uh, they are found to be um, single phase okay and m they are found to be multi-phase which means they do not form a solid solutions okay so the one with ifa are, uh, are single phase and the one with low efa are multi-phase we just did 10 of them then uh, this was done in 2018 but then in the last uh, year and a half two years we did many more even with other with our methods that are not here and pretty much it works in the same way there is a the one with ifa do form sorry solution the one with low efa remain uh, uh multi -fixed. okay this is what is found okay okay so you see that these are the spectrum you see that when the spectrum is very narrow the efa is uh, is high when the spectrum is very broad the efa is low right this is a uh, computational results these are experimental results so the one with high FA 
have rock salt, uh, have rock salt uh, single phases, and the one with low EFA are multi-phase, right? Okay, so this means that uh, you don't have the clear peaks as before, right? Like 111, 200, etc. You have other things here. Okay, so pretty much there is a threshold here, okay, above which uh, the EFA perfectly describes the formation of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, high entropy carbides, and below which uh, it uh, it uh, shows that they do not form. Okay, an example: this is hafnium, niobium, tantalum, titanium, zirconium. This is a single phase, okay, completely disordered, and those are grains. And these are uh, two phases systems: hafnium, molybdenum, tantalum. Tungsten zirconium carbide, and you see the, depending on the on the colors, you have a, one type of phase and the other type of phase, and so on. Right? This is for the first systems. Okay, this is the opposition of the of the of the metals. Right? Aflium from aflium to zirconium, they are pretty much random. And these are the position of the metal for the second ones that you see that they tend to 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 coagulate. Okay, to to all to stack together, so which means that the system is not uh, is not uh, perfectly uh, 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 miscible, right? So this is two. This one relates to this. This one relates to that. Okay, single phase and non-homogeneous multi-phase. Okay, but what strikes? Remember this again. Okay, what strikes is the the first two systems. Okay, look the first and the second. Actually, let's start from the second, right? Okay, yeah, I make it bigger here, right? Uh, look, afnium, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so look carefully at these things. Afnium, so how do we, how do we make this, this, this materials? We start from the binary carbide, so afnium carbide, niobium carbide, tantalum carbide, titanium carbide, zirconium carbide, they're powders. We mix them, we ball mill them, so powders gets very thin. Then we put them in the, inside the hot press. So squeeze that, uh, at the high pressure, normal pressure, not nothing like GPA, so, so, squeezed uh, with high pressure and uh, uh, high temperature, so they synthesize. Okay, so this phase is kind of obvious. In fact, it was uh, was it was reported a few months even before us. Why it's kind of obvious? Because afnium carbide is cubic, niobium carbide is cubic, tantalum carbide is cubic, titanium carbide is zirconium carbide. So all the precursors are cubic. Actually, they are uh, they are uh, rock salt. So if I mix rock salt with rock salt, well, most likely I will form rock salt. In fact, the the, the entropy formability is high, and their formation energy is 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 not very high. Sorry, the loss of formation energy. How much they are above the the, the convex salt. So this is the loss, and this is the gain. So you see that the loss is not very big. The gain is kind of big. So I say, well, it's kind of obvious that this material forms. In fact, it was found experimentally, experimentally, no computation, a few months before us. Okay. However, the most important compounds is this one. Is this molybdenum, niobium, tantalum, vanadium, tungsten carbide? Because in this one, the molybdenum carbide and the tungsten carbide, okay, I'm missing some information here. It's okay, don't worry. The molybdenum carbide and the tungsten carbide are actually not rock salt. So uh, 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 if you were following uh, uh, um, your intuition, experimental intuition, you would never guess that uh, why should I mix uh, a rhombohedra slash hexagonal uh, 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 carbide and the orthorhombic carbide with a rock salt carbide and hope that they become rock salt. In fact, nobody tried. But this is the beauty of computations because uh, for us, we don't care what is their uh, their their uh, their their their, their uh, ground state configuration. We calculate the the, the 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 EFA and then we see what it is. Okay, and look at, look carefully here. The EFA is uh, is big, one twenty five, but it's not that different than one hundred. But look at the delta H. Okay, so you have a loss of 156 milli electron volt. Okay, respect to 19, which means that this compound is highly unstable. Okay, from a computational point of view. All right, because do you know how much is 156 milli electron volt? It is a six times KT, a room temperature. So it's pretty much a room temperature multiplied by six. So these compounds I would have never guessed. Computationally, 
because when you look for uh, the stability, if you are not uh, within a few milli electron volt from the ground state, you just don't don't even think that these things would uh, would form. And this is actually what makes our analysis good because we really do not care much about the laws of enthalpy because we 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 are looking for the gain in entropy. So this compound could could not have found nor with uh, an enthalpic minimization like all these codes that do that do uh, uh, global minimization because they want to minimize the, the convex or they want to minimize the, the formation entity, these ones, okay? But this, this material can only be found with the opposite, by codes that maximize the, 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 the entropy with respect to, do, to do the configuration that uh, can be accessed, okay? Which is actually our code, okay? So this material was made, was found, and uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have these materials, and uh, is made, and then it, it, uh, it uh, therefore it exists. We have it. It's uh, it's kind of a, a, a like of a coin, and we have been using for we have been using this material for doing other experiments for hardness uh, and uh, and uh, and the conductivity and thermal expansion and thermal conductivity and so on. Okay, so this material does exist despite the the their very high. Uh, loss uh, information entropy. Okay. Another important thing is uh, don't look at this picture, but it's, this is not very relevant. Look at uh, the picture on the right uh, is the hardness. How hard these materials are? Okay. Rom, my apologies. Rom here is the rule of mixing, which means that uh, is uh, the expected uh, uh, hardness of the material. If it uh, if it were just uh, the mixture of uh, all the compounds, okay, an ideal mixture, all right. So going from the the mixture to the the high entropy high entropy carbides, for this one we have a forty one percent more hardness, and for this one we have forty four percent more hardness, okay. And we can we did this with experiments, the experiments are here, and we did this also with our uh, with our codes. Okay, this is uh, the the A flow elastic library. When the A flow elastic library, it's uh, it, it really see it's closer to the to, to the rule of mixtures. It's it's under the under the, the panel here, but it's here. So what we find experimentally, it cannot really be uh, modeled yet because it, it is truly a phenomenon due to the disorder of the systems. Okay, but remember, what is hardness really? Hardness is resistance to indentation. So you try to, you have an indenter, nano or micro, whatever, like a, like an air. You hit you hit your system. You make a, you make a, at a certain uh, force, and then you check uh, the, the 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 scratch, right? The little uh, the little dent that you make. Okay, this is hardness, right? The the smaller is the 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 dent, and the harder is the material, right? Okay. So what is really hardness is resistance to scratch, which relates to uh, to how deformations can uh, propagate uh, in the system. So how dislocations move to the system. This is really a plastic, uh, a plastic. Uh, uh, um, it's a it's a plastic quantity. Okay, so uh, property. So if a system were homogeneous. Okay. Remember that when a system is homogeneous, okay, meaning that uh, it's all uh, let's say half new carbide, right? Okay. These locations, remember, this location, it's it's a line defect. Uh, it requires some energy to move from one uh, from one position to another position, right? Okay. So you just kick a little bit of energy, bump, moves. Okay. It's like the drunk man move up and move left and right, left and left and right, but it, in average, moves more right than left. Okay, but this energy, this activation energy for for moving to jumping from one position to another position, they're all the same because uh, the system is homogeneous. Okay, so th this energy that is injected into the system to enforce the system this location to move, when this location has moved, is released into the system, and is the same energy that uh, another dislocation requires to move to to another position. So you have a concert, this conservation of energies. You know, no, no, don't have any reflection, blah blah blah, and all this energy help a dislocation to move. 
in a non-homogeneous system, which means that all the positions are occupied randomly by one metal or another metal, the dislocation actually requires a different amount of, uh, of energy. So maybe right now, maybe in this lattice, this position requires one electron volt. Well, no, one, but let's say 50 milli electron volt. On the on the other unit cell, requires 75 and then 40, right? So all these energies are different. And uh, as you know, when all the energy that are required and the release to the system are different, you have problems of interference. You have problems of uh, of uh, of uh, transmission, reflection of energy, and so on. So the overall effects. I just gave you an explanation that is really is really is really is really uh, uh, ideal, right? The the overall effect is that a non-homogeneous system, a high entropy system, will require more energy to have the dislocation moving than the energy of the single components, because some of this energy is going to be reflected. As such, if I re require more energy, then I need to do more work to do the same dislocation, which means movement, which means that if I put at constant work, because I'm pushing the force at the same amount in as an indenter, I will have less movement. So that's uh, the reason why high entropy systems tend to have a higher hardness. Okay, and uh, some will be much harder, some will be slightly a little harder. Okay, but you always expect a higher hardness. We measure them all, and our high entropy carbides, uh, look at here, are, uh, are pretty much uh, at the, the level of uh, tungsten carbide, okay, but are uh, four or five times less dense. Tungsten carbide is actually quite, uh, quite heavy. If you look at uh, the, the, if you buy a, if you buy a circular saw, you know, the blades, there is this, uh, the, the, the teeth of the saw, they are, uh, they are tungsten carbide and they are kind of uh, brazed, okay? So the material is very, is very heavy. But if you can make this material that is lighter, then it can have applications for, uh, for, uh, for aerospace to help uh, Elon Musk. Why aerospace? Okay, Because uh, if you want to land in Mars, we also need materials that are harder. And then we'll show you in a, in a few minutes. Okay, So anyway, so the, the summary of, uh, of this plot is that uh, we are able to reach the hardness on tungsten carbide, similar to the hardness of alumina, at, uh, at a fraction of, uh, of, uh, of uh, at the fraction of, of its uh, weight, the fraction of the density, a, a third or a fourth, all right? Okay. Let's move to the second point. Hardness, we have fixed the hardness. What about, uh, what about uh, melting, okay? The melting is a, is, is a problem, okay? Um, because the melting is even more complex than the, of the entropy. Because to get the entropy, we need to increase the temp. We need to calculate. Uh, we need to make molecular dynamics, uh, increase the temperature, see when uh, when uh, the the uh, order we might identify an order disorder uh, um, um, uh, descriptor, right? And then uh, we, and then by monitoring this, uh, which is usually this, this descriptor parameter or the order disorder parameter, is related to the bound. Uh, to the bond uh, distances or the bond, uh, the number of bonds, okay? And then out of this, uh, or, or to, to order parameter, we identify, we identify the metal. Okay, this is very complicated. It can take forever, even even more than the calculated entropy. So here we needed to cut some corners and then we need to go back to the definition of the melting, understanding what is the melting and uh, from, from a phase diagrams point of view, and see if we can cut some corners and figure out uh, if we can get uh, a descriptor to do this, okay? So the first thing to do is to understand uh, what happens when you melt uh, a mixture, okay? So you take A and B, this is really key, this is a kindergartner thermal materials uh, thermodynamics, okay? Take A and B, the system is isomorphous, right? Means that the B behaves like A, they love each other, so they mix. It's like a chessboard, the black and white, uh, where the black and white uh, pieces, they can mix easily, right? Okay, no problem. So A is going to have a melting point, B is going to have a melting point, and then the sum of A plus B is going to create uh, this lens phase diagrams. Liquid, solid, uh, This the top line is liquidus, the, so the bottom line is solidus, and here you have liquid plus uh, plus the solid solutions, okay? 
This is ideal scenario. A and B are, uh, uh, are isomorphous. What happens if A and B start uh, hating each other? All right. Okay. It means they say A, A, A. I don't like B. B. I don't like A. So I, I prefer to stay by myself. All right. However, at low temperature. But if you increase the sorry, if I increase the temperature, okay. Remember that A and B, you know, increase mobility, increase the movement. Uh, all these atoms go around and they cannot they cannot really avoid each other. Okay. So if I increase the temp, if uh, a low temperature. This is what's going to form. You see this uh, parabola going down? Okay, this is called miscibility gap, where the gap is a gap in miscibility horizontal between the two, two, two regions, which means that uh, at low temperature, the A and B will not mix, but uh, you will form a A-rich solution and the B-rich solution on the other side. One is going to call A alpha prime, the other is going to call alpha, alpha seconds, okay? In the middle, it's going to have alpha prime and alpha second. At this point, it's called critical point of this immunity gap. Okay. This is a high segregation, which means that A segregates B inside A and B segregates A inside B. Okay. So segregation of A inside B and B inside A is associated with the melting depression. Why? Because these things, A and B, they tend, they don't like each other. So it's easy to melt them, to break their bonds and to make them, uh, to make them liquid. So the phenomenon of increasing the miscibility gap also is associated with uh, reducing uh, the melting point. Okay, and because of the theorem of the of of the banana, I call banana theorem. It's in my handouts. Uh, you cannot uh, you cannot bend the stakes, uh, the lens uh, into a lens uh, that uh, that uh, that looks like a banana, but uh, the minimum needs to be associated with the maximum. Okay, so the minimum of a solid is is associated with the maximum of the liquidus, and this is called um, coherent, uh, coherent, um, coherent uh, melting. Okay, no, sorry, not coherent, congruent melting. Okay, so this will this will be uh, a liquid plus alpha. This will be liquid plus alpha, where this is uh, a rich and this is beta rich. Okay, so b rich. So this is the minimum of the melting, and this is the maximum of the of the miscibility gap. Okay, I can play this hate between a and b. They hate each other more. Eventually, these things goes up, these things goes down, and until they touch each other, this actually is the formation of the eutectoid phase diagrams. This is actually the eutectoid phase diagrams. So, to, to, we know, we understand that when this line goes up, this line goes down, and therefore the melting point goes down. So, is the, this has been not, this has been known for a couple hundred years. Since people have been measuring these phase diagrams with binaries and turning and so on, they always seen these things, uh, and it works all the time. Okay, so it's just a, it's the opposite of the truth. Well, it depends. Suppose that we start from a system like this. Uh, okay, we have a lens, uh, and then we have a miscibility gap. Okay, suppose that we are playing God. Uh, suppose that we can put a finger here, and we are able to bring it down. Okay, if we are able to bring it down, uh, this is gonna go up. Okay. It's going to do the opposite. Remember, if this goes up, this goes down. Therefore, if this goes down, this goes up. Okay. So if this point goes down, this point is going to go up. This point goes down, this point is going to go up. So you see the here a, 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 a possible um, a possible uh, 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 descriptor of a melting could be the the a possible descriptor of increasing the melting. Could be a descriptor of reducing the miscibility gap critical point. And therefore, here, instead of calculating these things that would take forever, if we are able to, to have a, 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 a description between the distance between this point and this point with respect to this value, okay, then what we would do, we just calculate these things, which is still complicated, but much easier to calculate that, calculating that, and then use this descriptor. To make a regression and guess what is the miss the, the, the melting point. Okay, so the critical temperature of a miscibility gap can be actually be the, the descriptor of the melting point. So we went uh, on uh, uh, on all the experimental values, okay, of the of the melting, uh, and uh, the one that we did not have, we used the Calfad approach, uh, and this is uh, this is uh, this is in this article in, in 2018, and here we plot the 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 log of the melting minus Tc. Which is the, the log of this. Okay. With respect to the log of this. Okay. Log of this. Log of this with respect to log of that. 
Okay, so we see that there is kind of a correlation. So first of all, we see that by increasing the number of, of species, binaries are red. You see, there are more and more. Tenaries are, 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 are blue, quaternaries are, 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 are green and so on. We see that uh, if we are able to increase the distance, which means that we are able to reduce PC, we are able to increase uh, M, the M, okay? So to increase the, the number of, uh, of, uh, of uh, to increase the, the melting, okay? I need to reduce the critical temperature of the miscibility gap, huh? okay? So it, mean, it means that I need to go down. So I need to create a solid solution with a very big, and we create a solid solution with a very big uh, 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 temperature, uh, temperature uh, uh, stable uh, region, okay? And, and my melting point is going to go up. In fact, if you take the highest uh, melting point uh, carbides existing, okay, so which is uh, the binary ones, which is tantalum carbide and aftalum carbide, those are the melting points, okay? And their ternary, and I, there is an article by by uh, uh, Axel uh, van der Waale, and uh, and uh, it's a PRB rapid communication. I should have put the reference here, but if you send me a note, I will send it to you. That explain these things uh, exactly. Okay. Anyway, if you take the binary, look at the ternary. This ternary has a higher melting point of the of the two binaries. Okay. This is four thousand one hundred. This is four thousand two hundred. And it's 4,260. So pretty much you get the 60 Kelvin. Okay. And look, the reason why you get 60 Kelvin is first because you go from binary to, to from binary and binary to ternary. And second, because the tantalum afnium sublates is actually high entropy. So this, this compound is no order. You have tantalum afnium that share a, a one of the two sublates of the rock salt and then carbon that the other one all right so this actually is a is a is a is a is a, is a, is a solid solutions right and you can get uh, and then you can get uh, you can get uh, increase the the, the 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 melting point so the idea is that instead of having tantrum avenue you have a bunch of other metals you do not know which yet and this is what we are working on and then you get and then you get the the the, the the, the highest possible melting point. So what we are doing right now, we are calculating the we are calculating the, the miscibility gap for all the metal carbides we have. Okay, and I show you how to calculate. It's very it's very complicated, but it's easier than calculating this and then find the one that we can make the experiments because measuring the melting point at four thousand plus Kelvin is actually very very difficult because uh, i mean uh, the, 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 you cannot really put this inside a pot uh, uh, and, and melt this right you need to put some uh, flow of argon that keeps uh, this material suspended and then uh, and then uh, and then heat it up with a laser and then uh, and then check uh, with uh, the light that is reflected map this light uh, into the, the the black body radiation and then and then uh, and then uh, with uh, a, a, a measure the, the spectrum and then you understand uh, the temperature and, and, the, and then you see if this thing is a solid or liquid okay it's very measuring the melting of this is very very complicated so that's why you can do only for a few of those okay so how do we measure the tc sorry how do we calculate tc this is also a problem too because we need a quick way to calculate the 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 the, uh, the miscibility gap Okay, so we have invented them. Oh, by the way, Stefano, how much time I have? I'm already negative. Uh, oh yes, I'm already negative. Yeah, quite a bit actually. Okay, okay, I'm already, I'm already in imaginary time. Okay, anyway, so it's better than nothing. So listen, to get the the, the this miscibility gap, uh, we use this method that we develop. Uh, uh, um, you have uh, Cormac, uh, Ken, and myself, right? And this is a uh, in this uh, in this article, which call we LTVC method. So what we have, as you know, our, our websites, the repository, have a lot of calculations, and uh, we have all these calculations, which are these energies, and then uh, we calculate uh, for all these energies, uh, this uh, uh, population vector. What is the meaning? Meaning that uh, for uh, every, every one of these calculations is an energy, and then, uh, and then thanks to the Boltzmann, uh, thanks to the Boltzmann uh, uh, um, uh, coefficients here, we calculate what is the probability of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, of 
occupancy, all right? So pretty much it is the exponential of minus beta, the energy, for all the energy that we have calculated, all right? So it's a huge vector, okay? Hundreds of, uh, of, uh, of uh, dimensions, okay? And then uh, instead of the energy here, you calculate the formation energy, that's why you have the mu, which are the references uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the concentration. Anyway, so this is what it is. Then uh, you go to infinite temperature where everything has the same probability and you normalize. So pretty much the population vector is a normalized probability multi-dimensional probability vector, okay? What happens? Think about that uh, you have this population vector at infinite temperature and the zero temperature. If, if the population vector is a zero temperature, you know that you're gonna have one phase or two phase or three phase, depends if you have a stable configuration or a decomposition, blah, 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 okay? Therefore, this population vector, okay, at zero temperature, this PJ at zero temperature, will have a, a, a well-defined direction in your multidimensional space. At the infinite temperature, this population vector actually will have a completely different direction because all these phases will pre be pretty much uh, equally probable, right? Because, you know, infinite temperature beta becomes uh, beta becomes zero, so everything is the same, right? Okay, so this, these vectors are the same vector with respect to change in temperature. So what do we do now? Once we have these quantities, we can calculate the angle between this the vector with respect to temperature. So you start from the infinite temperature vector, okay, which has a direction in the space, and you go down, 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 and you calculate this uh, this alpha, which is the which is the which is the 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 the, um, uh, the angle between the low temperature and the temperature vector. Okay, you see this is an angle, just just a Cartesian angle, right? You just do with the scalar product, right? Okay. Concept. Okay, this angle, you just do the derivative of this angle with respect to temperature, and when uh, the gradient of the angle reach its maximum, which means that uh, you are, you, that the, the vector moves with respect to temperature the most, uh, you identify the, 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 the phase, the, the, the transition. In fact, if you are able to visualize the, the, the P, and unfortunately I can't, uh, if this were a real, uh, real uh, seminar, I would show you my hand, my arms, right? but it's okay. This P really moves, this rotates very slowly, very slowly reducing the temperature, okay? And this on the low temperature, it, it rotates very slowly, very slowly. There is nothing really moving until you reach this line and bump these two, these two vectors, the low temperature and high temperature vector, they jump to each other, okay? So the big change, okay, happens at the phase balance. So in the position where the gradient is maximum, you, I, you identify the, 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 the miscibility gap, okay? This position here. Now that you identify the miscibility gap, you could do these things for all the other, for all the other phases, but actually it's even too complicated. So what do we do? We again cut another corner because we want to do this as, as quick as possible. But at this point, uh, before or after, we know that we can't, we change all the occupancy of these tanks. All these P's have changed dramatically, going a little bit above and a little bit below. Okay? Because the angle changed a lot. So we get that all this probability above, all this probability below, which are a probability above and a probability below. And this one through the kullback leibler divergence. This is a measure of the relative entropy that has been lost into the system. If this is ordered, there is no entropy, suppose ideally, perfectly ordered, no entropy, perfectly disordered, it's all entropy. And then the amount of entropy that is lost, this divided by this, is a relative entropy loss, okay? Going down, or gain going up. And this is the kullback leibler divergence that has been known for, for many years. So what do we do? We identify this blue line. We get, we calculate this red one only through the vector angle. And we identify this blue line as the locus of the equi kullback liber divergence. At this point, we calculate this, and then we, we search for this blue line as the equi D, okay? So we say that the miscibility gap is all this line, 
is the region where the, there is the equi loss of relative entropy with respect to the point that we found before. Okay, it's kind of it's kind of complicated, but uh, but uh, to implement, uh, it's also it's also kind of tricky. But once you once you think about it a little bit, uh, it, it becomes uh, it becomes obvious. So how long it takes to do this? Well, if you have all the calculation to get these things, takes roughly one hour. So it's not really it's not really on one CPU. So it's not really something that uh, re requires uh, months, right? But you need to have all the calculations. So that's why we have the repository. We keep adding calculation and calculation, calculations, all this epsilon, all this mu, all this x, so we can get this uh, uh, multi-component systems very quickly. Okay, how well it works? Remember, a model theory is as good as uh, what explains. Otherwise, really useless, right? Okay, so how well this model works? Look for uh, two, two, two examples so for copper, uh, for copper, uh, gold, copper gold here, the red one and then for niobium zirconium and for tantalum zirconium. So the, the, the dash line is what we get from the, the binary phase diagrams from the Masaski book, okay? One of the three books of the Masaski encyclopedia of the, of the phase diagrams. You can look at the, at the reference here. And uh, it works, uh, it's beautiful, okay? Look at, look at, Look uh, for for the niobium and look also for copper gold. The copper gold, uh, you you might go might complain. Oh well, listen, it does not. There are what are the other three things here? The reality is that our model says that there is only one miscibility gap. Okay. In reality, in copper gold there are three. There is one like this, one like this, and one like this. So what we get, we get the envelope of the miscibility gap. If we wanted to know what's going on, we should have done uh, one line here one line here, one line there, and then we would have got three, and then we would have got three. But a priori, you don't know, okay? But the bottom line, you get an, 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 an energy, sorry, a temperature that is related to the temperature of the real miscibility gap. It works quite well, and it is found easily in a, in a matter of, uh, of, uh, of hours, well, maybe days of calculations. Something that uh, from an experimental point of view, it might be unaccessible. Because to look for the miscibility gap, you need to make some mixture. You need to have the mixture to be soil solution and then reduce the temperature and the weight. Remember, lower temperature, lower kinetics and wait forever and ever and ever until you have dissociation. Okay. And you, you, it depends on which part of the phase diagrams you might have different type of, uh, of the compositions and you might form microstructures in all that, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And you would have to do this as a function of concentration. Really, really, to find miscibility gap is a huge challenge in the in for experimentals. All right, but for us, okay, if we know this and we know these lines and we have this method, actually becomes accessible. So at least we can go to the experimentalists and tell them uh, which materials to try, to test them. Okay, so our melting point optimization, and they do not have results for you yet, we, that we are still preparing for submissions, but we know how to synthesize, okay, which, sorry, we know which are, can be synthesized with entropy forming ability. We then, we, we, we know how to calculate the miscibility gap from uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, from this regression, or you can use a better, uh, better, uh, better uh, uh, regression such as machine learning, you can estimate the properties. In our case, we were estimating the melting point, and then you synthesize, which is simple, and then you test, which is, uh, which is very expensive. And then you, this is an example of, uh, of a sample, actually is the molybdenum one, the one that should not exist. And here it does exist. It's as big as a quart, it's like a coin, like a euro, or a thick euro, right? Two euros, one on top of each other, right? And so this is the way we are looking for uh, for uh, for uh, for high for high melting point uh, uh, super hard materials. So where we are in the in the phase the, in the in the um, uh, in the ASB plots, uh, we are here, right? As I told you before. So we are in between engineering ceramics and engineering alloys. Okay, but we have a very 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 high melting point. Okay probably harder than tungsten carbide and, uh, and uh, amium carbide and probably amongst the, ha the highest uh, existing in nature, okay? And this is very important because, uh, okay, remember that, uh, that uh, 
and Elon Musk wanted to die in Mars. All right, what is the atmosphere in Mars? Atmosphere in Mars is uh, mostly carbon dioxide, okay, and is, is very dusty. There are these big uh, winds that creates all this dust that goes on the on the, on the, on the, on the in the winds, right? Okay. So when uh, when Elon is going to land here, okay, he's going to have uh, and you can and you can read the the parameters in this Acta Astronautica in this in this, uh, in this review here. It's not made by us, but there are a lot of nice parameters here. Practically, the the ship needs to slow down from fifty to one kilometers per second. Fifty one. It's very it's very quick, and it's going to get very hot here. Okay, that's why you need something that has very very high melting point. But it's going to reduce the speed in an environment which is very dusty. So you have a pretty much all this dust that sand blasts the 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 shell, right? So to to avoid the destruction of the shell, you need to have a material that is very hot that can resist all this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, 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 sand that is shot at 15 kilometers per second and. Uh, don't crack, okay? Don't destroy itself. So that's why, for uh, for uh, for protection for the entry or for other application of uh, aerospace, you really need materials that are very hard, that do not uh, scratch and do not uh, have uh, large indentation, that are really hard. And uh, and, uh, and and there, are, there is a research to make uh, the hard hard materials, and they are still also 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 heat resistance like if you want to cutting tools the drilling tools and so on so improving hardness and the melting is a critical for our technologies okay so in this way we might uh, make uh, uh, Elon Musk happy because once we slow down to one kilometer per second the ship uh, gets the 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 it's called the parachutes and then it's a problem of uh, somebody else not our problem anymore to slow him down Okay, so how long it took uh, it took uh, the, to do this research from the collection of the data to understand the effect of the disorder and to get to also all the entropy forming ability and to get the materials with the synthesis and the test, uh, it really took like two, two years, right? All right, so this was one year ago, so pretty much three years. We have been working on these things for three years. And we were able to get to discover oxide and carbides that did not exist before. So high entropy oxides and the high entropy carbides were brand new, uh, are brand new materials that we discovered through these methods. So, so you see how, how, how effective and, uh, and uh, po uh, powerful can be computation to look for new materials. But you need to, you need to, you need to think about uh, uh, how to look them because otherwise you're gonna get lost in too many configurations or you're gonna become too picky on one configuration, thinking that uh, is the stable configuration, while the reality is all disordered. Okay, and with this, uh, I'm going to skip uh, other things. Otherwise, we're never gonna end. Okay, because there are some tricks to make uh, multi-component systems. Okay, and uh, we're gonna get to the conclusion of these talks, right? So. In my opinion, and I apologize for being uh, 30 minutes longer, okay? So we have been 30 minutes uh, more, uh, more uh, together. The future is uh, for, uh, for finding uh, uh, materials is uh, to look into disorders. A disorder cannot be avoided and actually needs to be embraced. We need to understand how to, to tame disorder and to study disorder because disorder is going to give us a lot of, uh, of new materials because somehow, the soil solution have properties that are not related to the properties of uh, of uh, the constituents. Remember the oxides uh, and uh, and then uh, the water splitting, right? That uh, one uh, splits the one gets the hydrogen and the other gets the oxygen, right? So the chemistry of the constituents is not the chemistry of uh, the uh, chemistry and uh, and uh, mechanical properties of this is not the chemistry of the soil solutions. So disorder is a key to find new materials. To find which one form, which means synthetizability, it's all about uh, studying entropy. So a lot of research has been done in the last 50 years so computationally to minimize uh, enthalpy. All these methods needs to be, cannot be used, and needs to be rewritten because what is important is to find uh, a way 
to to estimate quickly estimate entropy for a bazillions of different configuration to find these new materials. Okay, all these things are going to be put inside uh, uh, big repositories. One of these big repositories is ours, uh, and in on which uh, we will be able to run a statistical analysis. Okay, a lot of data, a lot of statistical analysis, and you can do simple statistics like uh, interpolation or more complicated one like uh, machine learning and so on, and uh, be able to find uh, when uh, when uh, when when the materials can be synthesized and when can he, it can have the properties you want. Okay, and uh, the, some advertisement for my repository. Uh, we are pretty much doing all the steps. We are constantly working, uh, creating these tools, and constantly working with experimentalists uh, to find uh, these new materials. And uh, and uh, occasionally we are lucky and we truly find them. Okay, and uh, we are trying to get equipped to find uh, to create all the computational parts. Okay, with this uh, I want to thank my collaborators. Collaborators are uh, are many from Duke and uh, many more from uh, from non Duke and they leave the slides here, so I'm going to be ready for uh, questions. And I apologize if I were uh, 30 minutes longer. Thank you very much, and uh, and it's been a pleasure to talk for one hour and a half. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Stefano. Um, so uh, I guess uh, um, we have uh, time maybe for a couple of questions. So as I said. Please use the uh, chat box. Um, there is a little bit of delay, so I, I'll maybe start one question myself, Stefano. So let's suppose you have uh, a multi-phase, uh, a multi-element uh, um, uh, alloy or ceramic or whatever you want. Is there any way you can determine some element uh, that actually are not disordered. So can actually you uh, you can you design a partially ordered alloy, where say one element uh, say on one side all the time? Yes, yes. You need to do the Bayesian uh, EFA, which means that uh, okay when you do all these calculations, uh, when you do all these calculations, uh, your EFA. You keep one fixed, and then and then you have EFA for one, where you move uh, one sub lattice or one uh, one set of materials of elements, and you don't move the others. Yes, you can do the same in the same way. It's going to be more calculations, but uh, yes, of course you can. Uh, but uh, what you need to do, uh, our code, uh, uh, it's called POC. I don't know if I have uh, if I have the handouts. So if I have the, okay, so. Uh, if you go on my website, uh, there is a there is a a, a, a reference uh, uh, to an article of uh, Coriosis, uh, Kesson Young, and myself, uh, where uh, uh, the art the title is uh, modeling of stoichiometry, blah blah blah, and the and the journal is uh, chemistry of materials. Okay, it exactly says how to generate the super cells, where you fix one species or two species and so on. Okay. Uh, Corey actually has a he has a, he has a, he has a nice talk about these things, uh, and uh, he will also teach to our students in the next couple of days. If somebody is interested, that we can uh, we can add them to our Zoom. Okay, how to do these things? Okay, once you have all the super cells where they satisfy your request, uh, where some uh, um, species are fixed, okay, then you will have. Uh, the EFA, the Bayesian EFA, meaning that you are fixing one species in one position, okay? And then you look which one is better. Yep. And okay, I guess you can do this thing. And I guess, Stefano, you do the same thing if you have, uh, say, if you want to design uh, a multi-component oxide where the component has oxide that crystallize uh, in single phase in different crystal structure, right? So then you have to yes. check whether, you know, it's cubic or zinc blend or whatever actually is the final one. Yes, but let me tell you, in, my, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in our uh, uh, experience, uh, the, the high temperature disorder phase is, most, is almost always very simple. Mm. So prepare to have a rock salt or a B1 or B2 right. or, a, or a very simple crystal sacs. You don't really need to try them uh, many. It's more a configuration entropy. Then, uh, then, uh, then, uh, the, 
the way you access the states, uh, then then uh, then all then the configuration that uh, mm. sorry the the underlying letters. Okay, so I will not trust. I would not. Uh, I mean, uh, if you mix uh, something that is that tends to be in a diamond uh, structure, you know, I will I will try zinc blend the wood sites. Yes, they were obvious. But uh, if I were if I were using trying these oxides or carbides, I wouldn't. It was just probably a waste of, uh, yeah. of computer or computer time because most of the times are really rock salt B one or B two rock salt cesium chloride. If 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 they are uh, if they are uh, high entropy alloys or metals, you can look at the Rabe review. He wrote a he wrote a review called high entropy alloys in nature in the nature review materials, and a few months before ours, and they're all FCC or BCC. Mm. You know the one that no FCC or BCC. Are very few. So, so there, are, the the type of underlying lattice is usually very simple, and there are very few. Okay, so Stefan, I have another. I'm reading a question here. Um, so essentially, the question is, when you construct the convex hull for uh, oxide, if you're worried about uh, error that you can have in DFT in terms of functionals and so on. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, Lucy. First of all. Questions about this. This things is all experimental, so there is no DFT error. Remember that uh, what we did here, we we say we don't care about H, and we take S ideal. So on the oxide, actually, we did not do any DFT calculations. It's all about uh, thermodynamics. We mm -hmm. move here, we move there. However, however, the question is good. So DFT errors for uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, oxides, we have been fixing these things, and uh, and that's why the, I skipped these things because there was lack of time. Here it is. Okay, we wrote our own uh, correction algorithm, which is called coordination corrected enthalpies. Okay, is this MPJ computational materials? Because uh, okay, uh, we 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 compared. Uh, the 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 the, the um, we call uh, we call uh, the, the 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 cedar uh, et al system where they have a correction which depends on the concentration of uh, of oxygen or uh, the ferrous systems that uh, by uh, um, Stefanovic et al right okay where they really renormalize the chemical potential of all the species to get uh, the the DFT DFT solutions right okay. Anyway, so listen, the ideal of those two methods are pretty much the same. The Cedar method, you really renormalize the chemical potential of oxygen. So you are tilting one, one leg of the phase diagrams up and down. So you get, uh, uh, the, you get uh, the, 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 the information energy right. On the ferret, you are tilting all of them, right? So you're pretty much taking all these triangles or 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 or, te or tetra or whatever it is, and you are tilting to get the right uh, the right formation energies. Okay, so those are corrections that depends are linear in concentrations. So if you have a system that remember a system that uh, uh, is a, it can be let's think about a system where you have activity versus uh, versus uh, activity is less chemical potential versus uh, versus uh, uh, compositions. Okay, if you have a system like that. Uh, this kind of corrections assume that the correction is linear with a composition. Okay. Therefore, suppose that uh, you know. Remember that if uh, Enrian at low at low co uh, concentration needs to be Raoultian at the high concentration because A with a little bit of B as needs to have a similar well needs to have this Enrian is going to uh, be associated with B with a little bit of A Raoultian on the other side. Okay. So if you have, unfortunately, I do not have. A, I do not have a. I do not have uh, the way to write uh, on the board. But uh, suppose that you have a system where the correction, you have activations, sorry, activity versus compositions, and you draw a, a straight line, 45 degrees. Suppose that you have a Henrian with below 45 degrees at low concentration, and Raoultian above 40, 40, 45 degrees at high concentrations. Okay, so you have a threshold that you as Gohanian below, Raoultian above. So if you have a, a method that uh, corrects with respect to the compositions only, linearly, it's not going to be able to pick a 
a, 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 because just a tilt in the face diagrams is not going to be able to pick a, a, a correction that is a positive at low concentration and negative at high concentration. So that's why we created this system, which is a coordination correct and entropy, that in addition to, to, to correct as a function of the composition, also correct as a function of uh, the bonds and the topology of the bonds. That's why it's called coordination corrected entities. Okay, and uh, we were able to show, and this you can read this this article. We were able to show that uh, even we using LDA, we get uh, we get uh, and uh, we, we we compare our results with the Kubacheski book, which is a, 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 a big uh, and also other uh, uh, experimental references where there are all these uh, reports of uh, experimental uh, formation entities. Right, uh, we are actually be able to correct. Uh, much better than our than, than than the other methods, and what we are doing right now, okay, we are uh, making a module for a flow, which actually, by the way, already works. Uh, that given, let's talk about in vast language. That given a postcard, given the 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 the, the, the species and the position, is going to calculate uh, the coordination. Is going to calculate uh, uh, the, to extract the from the species. Going to extract the. The 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 uh, other parameters like uh, electronegativity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay, and uh, and, the, and the various oxidation states. Okay, then uh, it will uh, it will. Uh, oh, by the way, every every species with a different oxidation state is considered like a different element. Okay, so it's going to calculate all these things, and uh, given your results of your your uh, your DFT. Is going to tell you what is uh, going to be the correction. In the okay, this is uh, already working. Uh, it's in uh, in a beta, and uh, Rico Friedrich and the uh, Coriosis are fixing, and it's going to be in one of these new releases of of, of the Aflow code. So you just uh, you have your postcard, you write what are your species, you press a button, you let it uh, crunch for a, for a few seconds, and you get the the corrections, and you will be able to to put uh, CC automatically. Okay. So the idea is that in the future we also going to correct uh, uh, um, uh, all all our database with a CCE. So we're going to have much better much better formation energy. So for oxides, the problem has been solved, and now we are we are making it available for uh, has been solved as per this uh, article, and we are going to make it available for uh, all the community. Yes. Oh, okay. by the way, and here I have uh, I have uh, some examples. Of, uh, of the of the corrections all right so the this comes from the paper and we are also making the correction for uh, for uh, nitrates because we are uh, trying to study carbon nitrates carbides metallic carbon nitrates okay so we need uh, we need the correction for nitrogen yes okay maybe Stefano, I, hope I, solve, I hope i address these questions yeah maybe let's let's have a, the, the the last question give it the time um um let me see. Okay, so um, one question is, uh, um, you talk a lot about configurational disorder, right? If you have a, a magnetic system, you have, uh, in principle, additional magnetic disorder. I mean, can this be another design rule for some of these alloys? Okay. We have not tested the magnetic disorder, but we have tested the effect of uh, uh, disorder in the in the forms okay so the change of uh, the vibrational uh, free free energy with respect to the disorder and we found that that uh, was negligible mm. this is for the vibration we have not tested the magnetic disorder yet okay which means that the, 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 it is possible it is possible that uh, we might have a, a a, a, a diamagnetic uh, material that uh, that uh, is a uh, that is a uh, high entropy uh, diamagnetic. I don't know. We oh. have not tested so far. So far, I can only tell you that the the vibrational one is negligible in the system that we have tested, and we are writing a, an article on this. That's a it's a benchmark article. It's very important, and um, and so far, so far. The configuration has always been uh, the key, mm. has been uh, playing the, the big role. Right. But I cannot answer the questions about uh, about uh, about uh, a, 
about a phase where the where the entropy is the magnetically sorry where the configuration sorry the magnetic entropy is the stabilizing effect i am not aware of that okay all right so maybe i guess we can do this too. maybe we can do this together yeah well yes i guess we can yes um okay yeah. so i guess given the time uh, probably yeah. I'll, I'll i'll stop here and um so um, you can we can clap our hand, but I think it's a virtual clap. So let me thank Stefano again. And uh, oh, by the way, let me let me write here. Oh, okay. No, actually, I have I have the I have the this the things. Okay. Okay. All right here. Okay. Where is this? Oh, there. Okay. Here. You see this? Uh, you see my name? Yeah. Here. If you have questions, uh, okay. No, we are not looking for postdoc uh, and, and students. Uh, uh, <laughs> now the funding is kind of weird. We don't know. But if you have questions, just send them a Stefano at Duke.edu. Yeah. And they will be happy to, to, to answer them. Absolutely. And OK, so and uh, so for all of you here, so uh, the next one, the next talk is going to be on Thursday next week. Um, and uh, we're going to have uh, uh, Alistair Chenko from University of Luxembourg. OK, bye bye, everybody.